To start this tutorial, we're going to look at patterns again in a bit more detail because I want to show you guys how you can A, create your own patterns, and B, edit existing patterns. Because say there's a field of dots and the only pattern existing is black dots, but you want to make them green or red or pink or purple or whatever color you want to make them. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that. And then also how to create a pattern from scratch. It's super easy. So let's get started. Let's go ahead and grab the ellipse tool. And we're going to create three circles. So I'm just going to hold down shift and option, grab and draw a circle. And then I'm going to grab the selection tool, hold down option, click and drag so I can create an additional copy. And I want these to be overlapping. And then I'm going to select both of these objects and hold down option, click and drag, and I want to make sure they're aligned and overlapping as well, right? We want all four of these to overlap. And with these two, I'm going to adjust the order a little bit so that they overlap in a circle. All right, so this one's overlapped by this one, which is overlapped by this one, which is overlapped by this one. All right, so now let's go ahead and change the color of these four to four colors of your choice. I'm gonna go with the standard C cyan, yellow, magenta. Oops, didn't have that selected. And then I'm going to adjust the opacity of all of these to be 50%. So if I select all four of them, I should be able to edit the opacity all at once. Great. And the only one I'm going to bump up a little bit is yellow, and that's just because it's so soft, I'm gonna make that 70%. All right, so it stands out a little bit more now. Okay, so I've got these four set. And one last thing I'm gonna do with the opacity is I'm going to change these to multiply, right? So that it actually increases and brightens the colors that we've got. So I've got these four objects, I've selected them all. And then all I need to do is go up to Object at the top of the screen and go down to Pattern and click Make. This is going to open up a couple windows. One says a new pattern has been added to the swatches. Da 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 da. Right? Okay. That's great. Now I should have one tile here in the middle and all of these other tiles around it are 50% opaque. And that's just showing me what the pattern is going to look like as it's spread across the whole thing. So I'm going to pull this over here just so I can zoom in a bit so you can see this better. All right. So first we can change the name of the pattern. I'm going to leave it at new pattern. We can set the tile type, right? By default, it's set to grid. We can do brick by brick and you'll notice it shifts things off and it allows you to set the brick offset, right? Half is normal. We could do a quarter, two thirds. Whatever, it, it just depends on what the pattern, what kind of pattern you're going for. And then let's say we actually want all of these tiles, right, which is what they're all called, to overlap. Currently it's set, so the width and the height is the exterior edges of this. So let's change this to something a little bit smaller. I'm going to change this to 300 by 250. Right? And so now all of these tiles are beginning to overlap and I'm starting to get a more interesting pattern. Notice that there are also, you can have hexagonal patterns um, or hex by row, right? So, but we're gonna leave these set to be as they are. We're gonna leave the default move tile with art. And you can change how they overlap as well. You can say the left should be in front or maybe the right one should be in front of the left one or the top one should be in front of the bottom one. And then this bottom section here, oops, sorry. This bottom section here just basically says, you know, how many times do I want this pattern to repeat in the, in the uh, while I'm making it, right? So do I need to see a, a huge field or do I need to see a smaller field? And I can either dim the copies or not dim the copies, right? This gives me a much better idea of what the thing actually looks like. Um, I can either show or not show the tile edge. And I can either show or show the swatch bounds. 
And if I do that, I'm going to go ahead and zoom out a little bit so you can see this, right? If I hover over this, it says objects outside these bounds are not repeated, right? So that's just something you need to be aware of, right? Anyway, okay, so I've got my new pattern. Great. And so then what I need to do is up here, I could either save a copy, so I could save this and make sure that I can use it again and again and again, or I can just check mark done. Now when I've check mark done, everything disappears because I haven't actually applied this pattern to an object yet. So if I go ahead and maybe, let's say I create a, I don't know, a star. I'm just gonna click and drag and you get a star. By the way, I don't think I've actually ever talked about the star tool yet, but while you're clicking and dragging before you release the mouse, if you hit the up and down arrows, you can actually add or subtract points on the star. That's just a nice little thing. So I'm gonna make a huge star and I'm gonna use my selection tool. I'm gonna pull it up and center it here. And then I'm gonna come in here and now it's hard to see, but there's, there's this new pattern here right at the end. And so if I select that, now I have this star that's full of this pattern. And notice that the pattern does maintain its transparency, right? Because I made each of these elements transparent, they are all transparent, they overlap each other, and they actually are all in multiply mode. All of those settings remain. So we've made our own custom pattern. That's amazing. I'm going to go ahead and delete my star right now. And I'm going to delete these guys as well. All right, that does not mean that I still don't have the option of adding this pattern. So instead of doing this new pattern, I'm going to select red first, and then I'm going to grab a rectangle, and I'm going to pull this out. And now that I've done this, I'm going to go ahead and open the pattern library. So I'm going to come over here, pattern libraries, and I'm just going to go with basic graphics dots. All right, so I've opened that, but because I'm zoomed in, I can't see it. Here we go. Let me pull this up more towards the center of the screen. And again, to make these thumbnails larger, I'm going to click on large thumbnail so I can see what I'm doing. So now to make this simple for myself, I'm just going to grab one of these fields of dots, right? So these are just black dots on a transparent background. In order to edit this pattern, once I've applied this pattern to an object, I can go to Object, Pattern, and Edit Pattern. And once I do that, I could change things, um, like I could change this to row by row. You can see how that shifts things over when you're at this larger view, right? I'm just going to leave it set to the default grid. But now that I'm, even while I'm in this pattern view, one of the things I can do is I can actually use my selection tool. Oops, and I'm gonna zoom in with the option key this time so I can just make this larger. And I can select the individual elements that are in here. I can adjust them, they're just normal objects. Anything that I want to do, that I would wanna do to any other object in here, I can do here. I can actually draw more stuff in here if I wanted to. Um, in this case, I'm gonna change the color of a few of these and maybe change and maybe scale them up or down or something like that. So I'm gonna grab this guy, I'm gonna make him yellow. Maybe I'll make this one green. I like the idea that some of these are black, so I'm gonna leave at least one black. Maybe this one's yellow as well. Uh, maybe this one should be green again. Right, this is a pattern, so I want this to repeat um, in a particular way. All right, and look, I've got these four other ones here. Maybe this one should be yellow as well. Who knows? Uh, then they're next to each other. We should probably leave this black and make sure everything else looks pretty good. These greens are all next to each other. That's fine. All right, so now maybe I want to scale up this center one. So I'm gonna hold down Shift and Option so I can scale from the center, right? So now there's this one big one that actually is underneath the other four, which is kind of awesome. Okay, so now I've made changes to this pattern and I can say done, right? And you'll notice it didn't change the dots here, 
but it has added a new one here. And I can always go in and actually save this pattern as well. All right? Okay, so I'm gonna zoom out a little bit because I'm zoomed way in. All right, so now this is a little hard on the eyes, but I've taken an existing pattern and I've made pretty significant changes to it. If I wasn't talking to you, it would take me you know, 30, 45 seconds to totally transform this pattern. Patterns don't have to be square, right? So if I was to move this guy out of the way and just create a long rectangle and make it a single color, not a crazy pattern, and then select it using the selection tool, hold down option, click and drag, and let it snap to the piece next to it. Change this to, I don't know, cyan and then select these two objects. One thing is that you might forget is if you only have one object selected and you're intending to select both of them and you go to pattern make, right? You're just gonna get blue is all that's gonna happen, right? It's just gonna be this, these rows of blue. That's not what we want. Um, so I'm gonna cancel that. And I wanna select both of these objects. And then I wanna go to pattern make, right? And so this is a really simple way to create um, lines. Now I also have strokes on these lines so while I'm still in this mode before I get this crazy grid on here I'm gonna turn the stroke off. All right, and then I just want to make sure it looks like the height is 506 maybe I should make this 504 right because there was a little gap between the different lines I don't know if you could see that on your screens but there was a tiny little line because it had made the tile as big as the object with the stroke applied to it. I can hit done, and now I could maybe draw an ellipse or a rounded rectangle, whatever it was I just grabbed, and I can apply this pattern to it. Now I have a striped pattern. One last thing you can do with the pattern tool is if I Oh, you can also always edit patterns by double clicking on their swatch in the swatch panel. And now that I'm in here editing this, I can also click on the pattern tile tool, which is right up here. And this actually allows me to change the size and the scale of this tile, right? So I don't have to do it in here with the, the values. Um, I can actually move the center of this thing Right. I could make this shorter so it actually overlaps the previous tile some, or that there's a gap in here. So there's plenty of ways I can um, manipulate this. And one other way I want to show you is just if we go to hex by column, right, you'll see how this changes things and that I can actually adjust the scale of this, you know, pretty dramatically as well. So depending on what you're drawing and what type of pattern you want, um, there's several different options available to you.